James Gunn just announced the new movies that are going to be a part of the new DC Cinematic Universe. Looks like David Zaslav is going to be filing for bankruptcy sooner rather than later. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker, the man who rules the world, takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes' Godbreaker at online booksellers today. Yesterday, James Gunn announced the first slate of projects that are supposed to be Chapter 1 of DC Studios' rebooted DC Cinematic Universe. And for this rebooted DC Cinematic Universe, they are calling it Chapter 1, Gods and Monsters, but I'm not going to be around for this first chapter because it looks like this first chapter is just a rehash of the same dysfunction that we got with the Snyderverse. Now, the big problem here with James Gunn's Chapter 1 is that it's just as disjointed and uneven as Zack Snyder's Snyderverse, and when I look at his overall vision, it really does not build into something organic. Now, the big problem I see from the beginning is that James Gunn clearly doesn't understand what people wanted in a DC Cinematic Universe, and we don't want gods and monsters. What we actually want are heroes and icons. And what we want in a DC Cinematic Universe is a DC Cinematic Universe that is filled with hope and optimism like we got in Paul Dini and Bruce Timm's animated DC Universe. We want something that's bright, fun, optimistic, and hopeful. And when you start out saying that it's gods and monsters, it's not really giving me that hope or that fun that we got when Paul Dini and Bruce Timm launched the DC Animated Universe back in 1992. Now, James Gunn and Peter Safran, they're launching this whole gods and monsters concept, and it's with a whole lot of jumbled concepts that, as I see it, really do not flow together organically to build into something larger like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What we have here are movies, TV shows, and animated series coming together, and that's a bit of a problem for me, because if you're trying to build a DC Cinematic Universe, then where do these TV shows and these animated series fit into this? That's a critical question I would like to ask James Gunn as related to his, what I see to be really jumbled vision as related to DC Studios because you have different projects in different mediums and they're not really coming together to form anything as I see it as cohesive because you're talking about launching the first chapter with, show, with something like The Creature Commandos which is a really obscure series of characters that most people don't really know about and because James Gunn wrote all the episodes, he's putting it there, but I don't see how this builds into a DC cinematic universe because you've got this, you've got the Waller TV series, which is a live action series, so things are not really coming together cohesively in an organic fashion. You've got these two projects that really don't synergize with each other, and then you're going to talk about launching a Superman legacy movie. And this, again, really doesn't flow into the whole overall universe in an organic fashion because you've got two projects that are actually diametrically opposed to each other in multiple mediums. So there's a lot of problems here as related to James Gunn's take on the DC cinematic universe because he's talking about, oh, I'm doing a live-action Amanda Waller series. I'm doing a series called Creature Commandos. Again, all of these projects do just don't come together cohesively to form a solid universe. 
then you want to talk about launching a Superman Legacy movie. And the Superman Legacy movie, it, this just, again, is another re remake of another Superman. And it really comes right after we've already had Man of Steel and with Henry Cavill. And we've already had the cameo of Henry Cavill in Black Adam. And a lot of people have a very sour taste in their mouth after getting hyped up for Black Adam versus Superman at the end of the Black Adam movie. And a lot of people, they weren't really happy about Henry Cavill's ignominious exit from the DC um, Cinematic Universe because James Gunn allowed people to get hyped up about Henry Cavill's possible return and then he goes out and says, oh, uh, we didn't cast Henry Cavill. Well, Warner Brothers allowed people to go out here and get hyped up, and now they're disappointed. And when I look at the overall series of projects that James Gunn has announced as part of his DC Universe, it really shows me how he has even less vision than Zack Snyder, because even though I had my issues with Zack Snyder's DC Extended Universe being extremely dark and gritty. The, prob the one thing that they had as a positive, I would say, is that the DC Extended Universe, at least all of the projects, came together cohesively, and you could see how each movie basically synergized into each other movie, even though the stories were not that great because the screenwriters did not know how to write well. Yes, you could see how Man of Steel could be in the same world as the Batman v Superman. You could see how Wonder Woman could fit into the world of the DC Extended Universe from her appearance in Batman v Superman and then in Wonder Woman. And you could see how all of the other characters like Aquaman and Cyborg and The Flash could fit into the Justice League movie. And everything really started to synergize with the three-hour version of Justice League. So you could see how everything flowed into each other. And every, as everything flowed into each other, you saw an overall cohesive story. But when I'm looking at James Gunn's vision, it's really not really coming together to build into anything the way Marvel Studios built everything as they were establishing the Marvel Cinematic Universe because again all of these projects really don't come together and we don't really see characters coming together in organic fashion I mean yes you've got characters from the old DCEU I mean I find it interesting that James Gunn cherry picks Amanda Waller and his Suicide Squad which is entrenched in the DC Extended Universe, but he discards all of the other characters. And again, that just shows me how he's basically turning this into a vanity kind of project because you're discarding all the characters you don't like and just putting your characters in place and making it about the characters you want and making it about telling your kind of stories. And that's not really good writing overall, because when you're building a universe, you want to build a universe where everything is cohesive. And if you're going to do a complete reboot of a universe, you would think you would want to scrap all of the parts connected to, to it all together. But what he's doing is the same mistake that I saw done with every effort to try to undo Crisis of Infinite Earths at DC Comics. And when they tried to undo Crisis of Infinite Earths, all it did was create a lot of chaos. And when I look at James Gunn's new DC Cinematic Universe, it's just as chaotic as the original, but it doesn't even have a solid structure that the original one had. And again, even though the movies were mid at the original Zack Snyder DC Extended Universe, they did have a good structure as related to connecting the characters and the characters flowing together organically to form a Justice League, which was designed to take on the threat of Darkseid. But when I look at this story he's talking about 
Superman legacy with Superman focusing on his balance between his Kryptonian heritage and his human side, I don't see how we're going to get a very interesting movie that builds into a DC universe that answers a critical question, why should we care? And it's hard to really care about the DC, new DC cinematic universe because we have been already been jerked around with a lot of drama as related to Black Adam and already you've already tried to scapegoat Dwayne The Rock Johnson and you wanted to scapegoat Dwayne The Rock Johnson, make him the bad guy and you wanted to make him the bad guy so that you could your DC ex universe could appear to be better but when I look at the projects that are presented in this new DC universe they are even worse than the original DC cinematic universe and they, they look like stuff that people really wouldn't care about I mean you've got redundant characters you've got a new Superman we've got a new Booster Gold TV series I mean we saw Booster Gold in Legends of Tomorrow as a black guy but now he's back again and again this really isn't a good look because you're taking characters and you're giving me a new version of an old character that I just saw and it's not really a character that I would care about in a series. Then you're talking about Lanterns where we're going to have Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart in a mystery and that's not really what Green Lantern is all about. I mean, when I think of Green Lantern, I want to see a guy with a, with, a, with, a, with a ring going out here taking on bad guys. So I'm not really seeing how all of this is coming together. Now, the biggest fumbled footballs I see are the Authority, which really, this I don't see how this works in the DC Universe because Wildstorm characters, they've always been a bit of a problem every time they try to integrate them into the DC Universe. But you're going to give me a team of the Authority, a team that is known for being violent and brutal and really being just hostile and you're going to tell me you're going to sell me a bright DC um, cinematic universe well the authority is completely diametrically opposed to everything that DC's um, universe stands for and whenever they try to incorporate Wildstorm characters into the DC universe Usually, it's a major disaster, and that's what I believe is going to happen here if James Gunn calls himself trying to make the authority part of the DC Cinematic Universe. It's going to be a major disaster, and I also find it interesting you want to put the authority into a movie. Well, we wanted a Justice League movie, and you would think the ultimate goal would be to go out here and give us that Justice League movie that we wanted as part of your payoff for investing in the other movies. But no, we get this authority, and again, a major mistake as I see it, because these characters are just too hard, and they deserve their own movie in their own separate universe. Now, James Gunn's biggest mistake, I believe, is with Batman because DC already has a decent Batman franchise coming from Matt Reeves, and he's saying that that Batman is going to be an Elseworlds Batman, but I believe that he's got that over there because he knows that if he cancels the, the Batman 2, he's going to alienate the fan base, but I don't see his version of Batman that's going to be a part of his um, first chapter as one that I would find to be appealing. Now, we already had a good Batman with Ben Affleck, and his performance was absolutely fantastic, but now they're going to be introducing a Batman in a new movie called The Brave and the Bold with a so-called father-son story with Damian Wayne. Now, I am no Damian Wayne fan. I really feel that the character destroys the dynamic as related to the Batman character because the reason why Bruce was given a ward was so that kids could identify with the Robin character and feel like they could be a part of a Batman adventure and when you give Batman a son what that does is it destroys the dynamic and makes it where you no longer see yourself as part of being with Batman 
or any superhero. So I really never liked the Damian Wayne character, and from what I've read, he's just a really obnoxious character that you really can't get into because he's just there to be this super smart guy who knows everything, and part of connecting with the character is seeing them learn about life. That was one of the things that was great about Tim Drake and Dick Grayson was the fact that we could learn about being a detective, we could learn at the side of Batman, and we could see how they were growing in their skills as crime fighters. That was one of the things that was great about them, whereas in contrast with Jason Todd, we could see the impact of a guy growing up in a single mother household, being emotional, and not being fit for duty as a superhero. That was also a very compelling story, but with Damian Wayne, we get this spoiled little boy who basically we don't have a connection with, and we're told that he's a killer. So they, they're going to make this so-called father-son story, but it's not something I believe most casual viewers would care about because the Damian Wayne character is grating in the comics, and I believe he would be equally grating in the movies. So this wouldn't be a Batman movie I would want to see because I really love the Batman because... It was a mystery, finally. We got to see Batman using his detective skills, and even though it ran a little long with that final scene, we did get to see Batman as the world's greatest detective, and I would have rather seen a series of mysteries, because I believe Batman could be as cool on the level as related to story as Sherlock Holmes, and we really needed to see more Batman being a detective, and I believe that would have flowed organically as related to if you make a Superman movie, then you have the mystery that he's looking into, and it ties into it, and it leads into a world's finest movie, but James Gunn has a different vision for his first um, phase, which is Gods and Monsters, and that's supposed to also lead into Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, which I believe is going to fall flat as the Helen Slater movie at the box office, because it's based on Tom King's story, and again, Tom King ain't that great of a writer, so when I'm looking at this story, it's not it's, it's really not looking like something people would care about, because he says he wants to go with a bit of a darker and grittier Supergirl, and that's not what people really want. When they think of Supergirl, they want to think of a girl next door, and they want to think of a girl next door who is out here looking to learn more about Earth, looking to learn more about the people of Earth, and looking to look, learn how about how she can serve the people of Earth as she mourns her culture that was lost. And I believe Paul Dini and Bruce Timm did a great job with that, with Supergirl of Argo City, even though I had an issue with the way her, her story ended, because I believe that he should have just left that alone. But that was a, something that they did, and they always do this to female characters, and I'm not happy with it. But that's something I, I looked at, but again, I'm not really thinking that this is going to be a bit of a good movie. It's not going to be something that's compelling. And then there's Swamp Thing, which I think is a bit redundant. They're talking about, oh, they're going to investigate the dark origins of Swamp Thing. Well, we had a swamp, good Swamp Thing series going on HBO Max, but David Zaslav and Warner Brothers canceled it, and now you're greenlighting another one. So that really doesn't make sense to me because... We had a really great Swamp Thing series going, but you're going to go out here and open it up and come up with another Swamp Thing series. Well, why didn't you just keep the one you already had? You already had the sets. You already had the, the, the production. You already had the costume, but now you're spending extra money. And again, just shows me how there's not really much of a good vision for this DC Cinematic Universe which seems like it's just a jumble of different things and no real centered direction. Now, the last one they want to do is Paradise Lost, and this Paradise Lost is supposed to be focusing on the intrigue of Paradise Island and talking about how they're going to make it like Game of Thrones. Again, I don't really think that this is a good idea. No, I don't think it's a good idea because we don't want a bunch of expository sequences 
this stuff can be easily explained in a Wonder Woman movie because people want a Wonder Woman movie. They don't really want to hear about Paradise Island. No, they want to see Wonder Woman taken on her bad guys. And again, not really showing us any sort of build into the Trinity because that's what people want in a new DC universe as related to movies. We wanted to see a build into the Justice League. We wanted to see a movie that starts with Superman inspiring hope, Batman exploring a mystery, and Wonder Woman further coming into the mystery, and all of them coming together to form the Trinity, and they confront the menace in the Justice League, and we then see characters like Green Lantern and The Flash and Martian Manhunter, we see all of these characters come together to take on whatever menace, and that could possibly build into Darkseid or Despero, but no, James Gunn doesn't have that kind of knowledge as related to the DC Universe, and what we get is a jumbled mess that is designed, basically as I see it, to try to go out here and make his own vision, and try to make it, as I see it, stick it to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who wanted to go out here and create a different direction using the existing DC universe, but when I look at James Gunn's universe, it's a world that's a complete mess, and it's just as dysfunctional as what we got before. And at the core of this, the common denominator as related to everything is Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers, as I see it, is its own worst enemy once more, as related to this DC cinematic universe which is going to be a world of hurt for them because I believe that this world that they're trying to build is not one that the audience is going to care about at this point because all of the projects as I'm listening to them don't really synergize together to give us that world as related to gods and monsters because again, everything is so jumbled, excuse me, but the whole thing is that people didn't want this. No, we wanted heroes and icons. That's what most people wanted. We wanted to see DC heroes being heroes and icons because the DC universe is a place that is a group of heroes who are icons and they are considered to be the icons and representations of ideals and James Gunn missed that whole mark as related to the projects that he's announced. And when I look at the project he's announced, it just shows me that when I look at Warner Brothers from a critical perspective, Warner Brothers is basically participating in the definition of insanity, doing the exact same thing and expecting a different result. And they said they're going to have the same mid results with James Gunn at the helm that they had with Zack Snyder at the helm because the common denominator as related to this dysfunction is, is Warner Brothers and the fact that Warner Brothers is a corporation without a direction and they continue to make the same mistakes over and over again. And when I look at their whole slew of new projects, it's the same old mess with the same, with different actors but the same people in charge at the top. And the problem with the people at the top is that they have not answered the critical question every screenwriter like myself has to answer. And that critical question is, why should we care? And the audience has less of a reason to care anymore after the whole Black Adam debacle where actors were just like Henry Cavill and Dwayne The Rock Johnson were disrespected and we have less of a reason to care because every time you start to invest in DC characters, here they come with a reboot and it's really annoying because many casual viewers, we want to sit there and watch the story unfold and we want the story to be canon but all of a sudden Warner Brothers comes out of the blue yanks the rug out from under you and wants you to continue supporting them 
even though they've yanked the rug out from under you and everything you've invested in. So it's hard to care at this point because after the cold way many of us saw Zack Snyder, even though I don't like his movies, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and Henry Cavill were treated, we don't really care that much about DC's new movies or its new TV shows because chances are most of this stuff will be wiped away just like the entire slate of DC movies like Shazam! Fury of the Gods and um, the Blue Beetle movie and Aquaman um, The Lost Kingdom. I mean, these movies are not canon anymore and people don't have incentive to go watch any of these movies because nobody cares at this point because DC continues to relaunch its universe and they want us all to be invested in The Flash. You have people saying, oh, it's the best movie since The Dark Knight, but that movie has Ezra Miller as the lead and I have no interest in watching anything with Ezra Miller and I have absolutely no interest in watching any more DC movies because most of the DC movies like Black Adam are extremely mid and the whole problem is is that Warner Brothers really just needs to leave the superhero genre alone at this point because as I see it the audience is getting burnt out on superhero movies the audience is getting tired of all of the drama behind the scenes of these movies and they're really getting tired of these movies overall because many of these movies they feel like they're coming off an assembly line they feel like they don't have a distinct fingerprint they feel like they don't have a vision overall that was something that the marvel cinematic universe had and I believe that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, when it was in its prime, was like the NWO in WCW. It was lightning in a bottle. You could only do it once. And every attempt to try to replicate it wound up falling apart because that was a one moment in time chance to tell a story. And that's something that a writer like myself knows as related to the business of writing and publishing. Some stories, they are a one-off thing they get popular and you can't really replicate things but we have the movie studios because they want to make the billion dollar box office they want to continue trying to make these kind of movies and they want to continue trying to make these kind of movies because they want the big box office but i believe that we are at the point where the audience i believe is basically tired of the superhero movie they want to take a rest from the superhero movie and I believe James Gunn's chapter, Gods and Monsters, may be the last chapter for his DC Universe, and it may be the actual closing chapter for superhero movies, which have been having a diminishing return over time, because, again, the audience, they can only watch the same story but so many times, and we're getting to a point where many of these movies feel redundant, Many of these TV shows feel redundant. Many of these animated series feel redundant. And I believe it's time to go out here and create something new, something different, something fresh, because the audience wants to see a different kind of story than a superhero movie or a superhero TV show. Yes, these genres are very popular, but people, they want something fresh and different. And I don't really see anything fresh and different from James Gunn. No, I see a lot of redundant projects. And I see a lot of projects that really don't flow together cohesively like the MCU did or like the Netflix Marvel Universe did. I really don't see how everything flows together to build that world. No, I just see a completely jumbled mess that reflects what I currently see in DC Comics that are currently so unreadable outside of possibly maybe two titles, Nightwing and The Flash. The rest of them are just absolute garbage. And what I see with James Gunn's DC Universe is a wreck of a universe that is basically, even though you rebooted it, it's already crashed and burned. Now, if you want to pick up my books in the SJS Direct Universe and see a universe of black characters coming together in 
a series of fantasy stories like the Isis series, the East Eam series, and the John Hayes series in the books of the Spinsterella Trilogy and the Thetas. You can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find those books at other online sellers like Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. And if you want to see me make more videos about comics, science fiction, and fantasy, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Spellbound, a darker shade of black. Get your copy today at your favorite